Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of cloud computing. Today, my guest is from Glasshouse. We have Ken Kopas. He is the Director of Cloud Services at the company. So, Ken, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate your time. Hey, well, well, thanks for coming on. Well, first, I guess let's get acquainted with, with Glasshouse, Ken. Who is Glasshouse and who do you help? So Glasshouse is a global provider of vendor independent data center consulting and managed services. And we typically partner with customers to define and execute data center strategies and help clients address the complexities of cloud, virtualization, storage, backup, security, and basically the next generation data center. Um, Glasshouse is uniquely vendor independent in that we do not sell vendors products. Uh, enabling us to provide an objective analysis and recommendations. Uh, the depth and breadth of our expertise has been developed through more than 18,000 engagements with over 12,000 clients. Okay, so uh, I brought your slides up. Why don't we start with that and let's, uh, let's hear a little bit more about your background. Okay, well, uh, my name is Ken Kopis and I am the Practice Director of Cloud Computing and IT Services Management for Glasshouse Technologies. Um, prior to joining Glasshouse, uh, I did serve as a business development executive with IBM and also as an IT executive for NetJets in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I do hold a degree in computer and information science from the College of Engineering at The Ohio State University, as well as a master's in business administration from the Fisher College of Business, also at The Ohio State University. So <clears throat> Glasshouse works with clients um, as a trusted partner and advisor to help them holistically transform their IT from focusing on technology initiatives, which are typically vendor driven, to focus on providing services, which is more business focused. We've structured our capabilities in data center infrastructure around four key practice areas, those being data center, workspace, security, and cloud. Obviously today we're focused on the cloud practice. Um, we then take a common approach within each practice area by dividing our service offerings into three main categories. Those categories are advise, architect, or design and deploy, <clears throat> and manage. The idea is to advise, consult, and develop strategies for these areas, work with clients to then design and deploy tactically within those strategies, and even um, assist in ongoing management of the operations of those environments should the client choose to do so. Uh, and Glasshouse uses this end-to-end -end planning, deployment, and management experience with thousands of clients to deliver better value. Unlike specialized consultants that do not take uh, an operational responsibility for implementing and managing the recommendations, Glasshouse brings this operational experience to our consulting efforts, providing clients with real-world experience of what a client will encounter when they deploy their initiatives. What sets Glasshouse apart can be summed up in four key points. Um, number one, we are vendor independent. So our objectivity comes from our core philosophy of not selling any vendor's hardware or software. We do not resell anyone's products and we do not have any referral fee relationships with other vendors. This is one of the primary values we bring clients, particularly as they are increasingly inundated with vendors products and hype around cloud virtualization and other technologies. The second point is we're not just about the technology. We take a holistic approach to our engagements that includes people, process, and technology. The majority of IT initiatives are driven from a technology perspective, often led by product vendors who are pushing new technologies and platforms. Glasshouse facilitates communication between IT departments and their service consumers to ensure a whole and accepted solution is put into place the first time. Third point is we have multi-vendor heterogeneous expertise. Um, what that means is virtually all enterprises today are comprised of many different vendors' products. In other words, they're heterogeneous. And even within a single vendor, oftentimes you've got many different levels or, or code revisions in your data center. And a lot of times when a vendor is selling a solution, they know it inside and out, but only in their specific lab scenario, whereas 
glass house consultants are chosen from people who have been in the industry for a long time and they've seen it and they know how it works in a real environment with other products and other vendors um, solutions as well. And finally, uh, the fourth key point is end-to-end -end responsibility. So because we provide service from advise to design and deploy to manage, clients can be comfortable that they have a true partner to ensure the success of their initiatives. Unlike specialized consultants that do not take an operational responsibility for implementing and managing the recommendations, Glasshouse brings this operational experience to our consulting efforts, providing clients with real-world experience of what a client will encounter when they deploy their initiatives. So this slide is basically showing um, <clears throat> some technology initiatives uh, where on the left, we did a survey of senior IT professionals, and this shows their top 10 priority. On the right, we're showing business drivers that came as a result of a similar survey with CEOs and senior CIOs listing their top 10 priorities. Um, these two surveys illustrate to demonstrate the disconnect between technology initiatives and business priorities. Glasshouse works with clients to align technology initiatives and other technology initiatives and align them with business priorities. This will help prevent failed initiatives, specifically in the cloud, uh, where there are many challenges. So the current challenges around cloud deployments are they tend to be uh, IT-centric initiatives with limited user acceptance, um, not necessarily enough thought around processes, procedures, security, uh, network impacts such as bandwidth, and a lot of times IT departments are so used to being a cost center that they don't put a lot of thought around how they're going to perform um, cost chargeback or showback. Cloud services deployment is not easy, um, and installing a cloud orchestration program is not equal to deploying cloud services. So for the IT departments that are approaching cloud with a legacy mindset, um, that, that kind of technology-centric view really has a high probability of failure. When it gets right down to it, you know, choosing the correct technology, while important, is really only 20% of the solution. So Glasshouse Cloud Services will help the transformation to an effective business capability. And really, if you think about it, cloud is a wake-up call to our IT departments to start listening and collaborating and providing the desired services that are fast and flexible. Otherwise, someone else will. IT departments must partner with their service consumers. So the chief information officer can no longer play the role of CI No. He must embrace his new role uh, as a business enablement partner that always says yes and here's how much it will cost. Looking at the cloud engagement holistically means also looking at people and process along with technology. And the truth is, the people in process tend to be 80% of the solution. So Glasshouse helps clients uh, bring a new level of business maturity to their cloud deployments. Shifting the focus from using cloud to quickly obtain IT capacity to using cloud services to, to deliver increased business capabilities while maintaining or addressing security and data protection issues. There really isn't a one cloud fits all type of model uh, and companies must utilize different types of clouds, such as private, public, and hybrid, and various models, such as infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, for specific use cases. This approach provides true business value to our clients, including predictable costs and protection of existing system investments. For clients that have invested in initial cloud deployments that have not met design objectives, Glasshouse works with clients to optimize those cloud initiatives. So here is an overview of the cloud services um, that we offer. Again, subdivided into the three main categories of advisor services, architect services, and manager services. And, you know, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. 
and you know, I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek about our competitors, but when it comes to Glasshouse, we understand that every customer is unique, and, ha and, and we have the proper tools and to build engagements to our customers' requirements. And so as we look at the three main categories here, Cloud Advisor Services. So what's listed under there are the services that help our customers by providing rapid education of cloud models and deployment options. Um, we assess requirements and readiness for cloud. We'll help them answer, what are we truly trying to solve by implementing cloud? We work through and analyze security and regulatory requirements, help them determine the cloud model attributes and deployment that meet their requirements. We'll analyze their business cost capabilities and help them make a go, no go decision, and then help launch and facilitate through project management. When we move into our second category of services, Cloud Architect Services, where we help design and deploy, we will facilitate collaborative workshop sessions with their service consumers to define their cloud service offerings. We can then help develop reference architectures for the cloud service model, compile a list of TCO, or total cost of ownership components, help them construct that cost pool, and then devise a system of per unit chargeback or showback. We can help them identify the base metrics to collect, establish appropriate key performance indicators, and design a single pane of glass reporting system. Deploying cloud services alone won't buy you much, so we help you identify governance and process changes required to reap the full benefit of your new cloud services. We'll also help you figure out the organizational changes necessary to support your future cloud services environment. And we facilitate building your cloud service development plan at either a high level or a very detailed level, complete with project plan and precedence diagram, depending on your need. We can also provide project management and delivery subject matter experts to help deploy your cloud services. In the end, you may decide that supporting cloud services really isn't something that you want to build a skill set or team to do. And in that case, we can also help you with our cloud manager services where we can actually manage your cloud environment for you and allow you to focus on delivering more value in your area of core competence. These are just some additional resources um, that I wanted to make available um, on our website at glasshouse.com slash cloud you can um, download a copy and read through um, several different white papers. Um, those include the CIO's Guide to Cloud Computing, Implementing a Multi-Tiered Cloud Services Strategy, and How to Build an Infrastructure as a Service Cloud. And if you're interested, uh, I do have some articles that have been published on Wired Innovation Insights. Um, those articles are Cloud Lessons from a Lawn Service Provider, the Real Deal, why, why Cloud is No Longer Sufficient, uh, in the Real Deal series, Why Private Cloud Initiatives Fail, and coming soon, uh, Steps to a Successful Cloud Deployment. So stay tuned for that one. And uh, that is the end of my presentation, and we can go into uh, Q&A if you like, Rich. Oh, that'd be terrific, Ken. You know, I, I'm curious about your uh, your business model when 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 you don't sell any of the things you're recommending. Do you work with partners though to help deliver um, these things that you're architecting for your clients? So we we work with um, third party companies that do make uh, and sell hardware and software um, in a couple different ways. Number one. Uh, we train with them to make sure that we are up to speed on the latest technologies that are out there. And they are all too happy to keep us trained in their technologies because um, when we're out on engagement, um, we can then speak to uh, their solutions intelligently and recommend them when appropriate. Um, we don't recommend a single solution unless only a single solution meets the customer's requirements that makes sense sure sure and yep. then you know you you described how you 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 sit down with them and uh, uh, you align their technical uh, requirements with their business challenges and and they're at least at the outset those two are are, are not aligned at all 
uh, how do you go about doing that? Is is it? Uh, uh, do you survey them? Uh, um, do you do audits, or uh, how does that go? No, that's a great question. So Glasshouse has um, a very unique approach um, to what we call a, achieving the service provider model, which is where you treat your service consumers as customers. And the way and the way that our approach works is we facilitate workshops where we bring the, cons the service consumers into meetings with the service providers, those being the IT department. And we actually facilitate collaboration between the two. In, in many instances, uh, it's the first time the two entities have ever talked together. Really? Uh, <laughs> and, oh yeah, absolutely. And in a lot of instances, we even find out that even within the internal IT organization itself, because we bring in all the silos, mm -hmm that that's very eye-opening for them as well. And so just this facilitated workshop approach has a great deal of value in and of itself. Well, that's terrific. So I, I did want to ask you about one term you used. Uh, you talked about a hyper-hybrid cloud. Is that just a mix of private and public clouds uh, working together? Or what, what did you mean by that? Yep, so that is a term um, that our marketing department came up with, and basically uh, it means exactly what you said. And so the idea is that a single cloud model or type really won't fit the bill in most large enterprises. So what you'll have is um, for their developers, for example, it may make, se it may make sense to set up um, a hybrid or even uh, public with, with security, you know, proper security measures, um, platform as a service cloud so that they can spin up environments, do their development, and spin them down uh, and not have to pay for that infrastructure while it's not being used. In production, it may make more sense to set up a private, completely private infrastructure as a service and deploy production that way. And for the company's sales team, of course, something like Salesforce.com makes a lot of sense from software as a service standpoint. And so what we're finding is that one cloud really isn't going to um, fit the bill for a single client. They're really going to be looking at this hybrid, hyper-hybrid mixture of several different clouds for very specific use cases all throughout their environment. Well, great. Well, Ken, kind of a wrap up here. You know, a as you work with clients, uh, the cloud is a very dynamic space. It seems like there's something new for me to write about all the time, right? Uh, uh, do you have to do you have to like reeducate uh, old time IT folks, uh, or or is it not a matter of that? Is is it just uh, lending your expertise to help them be successful? So it's it's a little bit of both. Um, and the reason is, is exactly as you say. Things are changing all the time when it comes to cloud computing, and the terminology is still not solid. Um, we do have different organizations that are putting definitions and standards in place, but we're far from finished with that process. And a lot of times, people can say the same word, for example, private, mm -hmm. and mean two completely different things by that. Uh, you know, one person means uh, on-premise in my data center behind my physical security when they say private. Uh, a vendor might mean, well, we have you segregated off in your own virtual private network, but you're still multi-tenant in our environment. Well, you know, that might not be an acceptable definition of private to some. And so yeah. we go through all of the different um, syntax, really, and we make sure, number one, that we're speaking the same language with our customer. Mm -hmm. and, and it really is, it's an education process, and beyond that, there's a lot of fears concerning cloud. You know, is this going to affect my job? Will I still have a job? Um, and, and to that, we really try to uh, allay any fears. I mean, the IT department is still very relevant and very necessary, mm -hmm. and, in, and in the case where, you know, public cloud services make sense, we really just see them kind of altering their, their role um, from, from providing those services directly to, to brokering those services. Because in the end, 
the business user is still not technical enough to make the technical decisions required to deploy cloud services, even if they're coming from someplace like Amazon.com. You still have to know how many processors do I need, how much memory do I need, how much disk space, what kind of I.O. characteristics am I looking for, and, and that role is, will still need to be played by the IT department. Well, terrific. Well, Ken, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Yeah, thank Rich. I really appreciate your time. You bet. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of cloud computing.